Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this one is a special video because it combines all the things that I love into one and that's my art book collection. So if you haven't seen in a few of my previous videos, I also share my drawing time lapses. So naturally, besides manga, I also collect art books. Uh, so let's get right into it. First set of books are Ghibli art books. These first two that I'll be showing I had gotten from the Academy of Motion Pictures Museum when they had the Hayao Miyazaki exhibition. I attended twice back in October and November of last year where they showcased Studio Ghibli's body of work, some models, installations, and also screened movies. Uh, the first time I went, I watched Princess Mononoke, one of my top favorites and very first Ghibli movie I ever watched when I was a kid. We couldn't take pictures or videos inside, but I'll include a couple pictures here of the outside of the exhibit. But as you can see, while I was flipping through this first book, it has a lot of writings about Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli from the perspective of other industry professionals and admirers. I always appreciate key quotes too because I feel like it reveals a lot about someone's thought process. Uh, towards the end, it has illustrations and image boards of selected works, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you're looking for a comprehensive book about Miyazaki, then this one is a pretty good one. The second book is really interesting and you may have seen this around, but it's the Totoro edition of the Ghibli storyboard collection. It comes in this nice sleeve and I believe there's over 20 of these storyboard books, one for each Ghibli movie. I love flipping through this and it's like quote unquote watching the movie because it takes us through the movie with comments off to the side. I have no experience with storyboarding or animation, but it's just amazing to see the details and the flow from scene to scene. If I do happen to come across the Princess Mononoke one or Howl's Moving Castle, I'd probably grab those too. And speaking of Howl's Moving Castle, my third Ghibli art book was a gift and it's the art of Howl's Moving Castle, my other top favorite movie. This book is just stunning with these glossy pages that have concept sketches, art, backgrounds, character designs, and so much more. The sheer amount of detail in these drawings and visual world building is crazy to me. It's uh, also interesting to read about the mindset of the animators at Studio Ghibli and how they approach projects like this because, you know, everyone has their own style and finding a way to comprehensively deliver that sort of Ghibli-esque quality I'm sure is harder than we all think. Uh, what's also awesome about these books in particular is that they include the final screenplay. Uh, so it's like a full guide to the movie, so definitely check this out if you can. The next set of books are the Violet Evergarden Keyframes Collection, Volumes 1 and 2. This first one has copies of original drawings from episodes 1 to 6 of the anime, and Volume 2 uh, has episodes 7 to 13. I suppose I'll include a spoiler warning here in case any of you haven't seen the anime. Uh, Timestamps, as always, are below in the description if you want to skip to another section of art books. But if you haven't seen Violet Evergarden, you really need to uh, if you enjoy shows that evoke heartfelt emotions. Uh, this one is one of my most favorite animes that no matter how many times I watch it, I will always cry or tear up. Uh, Kyoto Animation, absolute legends in the animation industry, really produce such a beautiful series from the light novels. I mean, looking at these keyframes, uh, you know, I'm in total awe of the detail and quality. Uh, and while I will say that episode 10 is incredibly heart-wrenching and a favorite episode of mine, which I appreciate that it was continued to a certain extent in the latest final movie, uh, episode 7 is actually my top favorite. Uh, the grief in this and the resulting end of the episode were well executed and has such a beautiful scene of Violet while she runs across the lake. Uh, it was just so magical and 
and really close up the episode in such a satisfying way. And I think that's what's so masterful about Violet Evergarden and the art really brings it home. Next is The Real Folk Blues, a Cowboy Bebop fan book. I got this from an art gallery I frequent a lot. It contains fan-drawn comics, illustrations, and essays created to celebrate the show's 20th anniversary back in 2018. Uh, Cowboy Bebop is a classic anime for me growing up and one of the very few I can absolutely only watch in English dub. <laughs> I just got so used to it watching it that way. Uh, but this is such a fun fan book since it takes our favorite Bebop crew and spins them in all sorts of scenarios, whether that's through drawings or writings. The contributors are at the end and when I went through this book, it's also uniquely stylized which I appreciate as an artist myself. So next is the Fushigi Yugi Ultimate Fan Guide. I mentioned in a manga haul that I have Fushigi Yugi Volume 1, uh, but don't intend to collect it because I was mostly an anime watcher when it came to Yu Watase's works. I'm not sure when I got this because it had been so long or if I had gotten it as a gift, uh, but it just goes through the episodes with summaries and some screen caps. Um, nothing too extensive about this one and just your classic 90s animation style. <laughs> There's also some game information in the back, which I have no idea what this is about, but yeah. <laughs> Next is The Art of Inuyasha, another series I only watched the anime for when growing up and was super attached to. Uh, when it was airing on Toonami, if anybody remembers that, uh, I'd sneak into the family room to watch the late night animes on a school night and uh, for Inuyasha, it'd usually be showing the Yura of the demon hair episode or the one where Inuyasha turns human for the first time. Like, no fail, every time I tried to watch these episodes, it was either showing one of those two for sure. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this mostly has images from the manga and some of the images are from the anime for comparison. Just looking through this is giving me such nostalgia feels because Rumiko Takahashi's style is so distinctive. Next is this G Gundam technical manual that has data on the Gundams in this series, development behind the mobile fighter system which is pretty different from the typical cockpit operation of other Gundams, and some character info. Uh, so G Gundam is another anime that I only really watched in English dub. <laughs> uh, I can't remember when or where I had gotten this, could have been from Borders when that bookstore still existed, or uh, a shop like Kinokuniya. Uh, either way, I really love this series and actually have a Gundam model collection, uh, some that I've built and others that are still in the box waiting to be built. I mean, it's been years and they're still in the box, but I don't know, someday I might get back to them. Speaking of my Gunpla collection, I also have uh, Gundam Seed kits and this fan book. It has these fold-out posters that I never pulled out, some full illustrations, character, and Gundam profiles, and then a single page per episode with summaries and screen caps. I was pretty obsessed with this anime, uh, plus the opening and closing songs were such bangers. Uh, I listened to those songs all the time, sang along and everything. I really like the anime art style and character designs. I think I might have gotten this at a store in Little Tokyo and just remember keeping this book in the plastic covering for the longest time. <laughs> So these next couple books are from a very current anime, and that's these Jujutsu Kaisen Key Animation Volumes 1 and Volume 2. I had gotten these from Kinokuniya, and wow, these are worth every penny. Uh, this first volume has episodes 1 to 13, and then the second volume has the rest of the first season, uh, which is episode 14 to 24. Uh, the covers are such nice quality and the art super stylistic. Uh, this first one with Yuji and Sukuna. So cool. Uh, and then the second one, as you saw, has Gojo and Megumi. I would legit frame these covers, uh, 
but I'll include a spoiler warning here too, just in case you haven't seen the anime. Uh, feel free to check the timestamps again in the description if you want to skip around to another series or book. Um, but as everyone is aware, Mappa is <laughs> such a legend when it comes to animation and the sheer detail they put into their scenes and environments. Uh, I already always appreciate the amount of work anime animators and uh, production teams put into their series, but geez, I mean, the Jujutsu Kaisen anime is something else. I love seeing the frames with just the lines and then the resulting colored frame, which they do in quite a bit of these books. Uh, and it's so crazy to wrap my head around what goes on in each episode. Like, are you kidding me? Some of the foreshortening and perspectives of these drawings, you know, not only are these really amazing to look through, they're really great references for my own art. <laughs> I mean, like look at this detail and they have to do this for, you know, a lot of the frames just to get it as smooth as possible, which I mean, if you've seen the anime, you know how well it's really animated. Um, but as someone who loves doing line art, seeing all these clean lines really is just a dream come true. <laughs> I know you've heard me talk a million times about Horimiya, but this next book I just had to have in my collection, I mean along with every other piece of Horimiya related merch, and it's the Chief Animation Director Artwork Collection. Uh, another spoiler warning in case you haven't seen the anime. Uh, Timestamps are below if you want to skip ahead. I got this on eBay, and uh, as I said before, that Cloverworks is another amazing animation studio that gave Horimiya the perfect treatment it deserved. Just like the Jujutsu Kaisen key animation books, these also show the keyframes and the corresponding colored scene from the anime. Uh, the art is so amazing and I just love seeing it in this form with just the lines. Uh, I'm not sure how I learned of this book, but you know, I. I uh, got this second hand uh, from someone in Japan. So these key animation books are quite pricey, but always worth it to me from the art aspect, but also just as a fan of all these animes. These next handful of books will be moving away from anime art and into original art. Uh, these are books from some of the artists that I admire. Uh, first are a couple books from Ross Strauss, and this one is Bloom Volume 1. I got it at a convention where I was able to meet Ross in person. Uh, such a great guy, and I remember I drew fan art of Nima for him as appreciation for what he does, and was able to give it to him while I was there. Uh, this one is a signed copy <laughs> uh, and contains, you know, a lot of the girls that you've probably seen in his socials. The fluidity of his art is so beautiful and, you know, of course, the color dodge take it that extra level. I had ordered his Neva book and received copy 1065, which is pretty cool. The world building Ross created is just so amazing and fleshed out from regions to the whole host of characters, their stats, this power structure, and uh, there's just there's just so much. And I know he draws great female characters, but I love seeing his male characters as well. It's such a beautiful book that I'm glad to have gotten a copy of not just something to enjoy and flip through, but something to inspire myself as an artist. From that same convention where I met Ross, I also met Loish and got her sketchbook of Loish that comes in this really nice sleeve. Of course, it's a signed copy. And I had also given her a fan art that I drew of a character she had drawn. The artists that I've met in person are just so sweet and I always love being able to go out there and share my love of their work and support what they do. Uh, Loish's art is so dynamic and distinctive and I enjoy being able to read about her process and see it step by step. True to the title, there 
or a lot of her sketches, concepts, and studies. I appreciate seeing the beginning and middle progress of illustrations, so this book really delivers. Uh, she's also got tutorials towards the end, which is always helpful. After meeting Ross and Loish, I also met Art Germ at that convention and got these couple ink and brush booklets. Uh, this first one being his 2017 Inktober collection and then color sketches from 2019. Art Germ's artwork is just so iconic when it comes to these character illustrations and his blend of that anime and more western art style. Uh, his use of markers and colors are always so intentional and clean, which obviously has taken years and years of practice. I mean, he's been creating art for such a long time, and uh, hearing him speak on topics during that convention, on you know improving your art uh, while he was drawing at that convention was was pretty cool. Next is the art of Heikala. I met Heikala in person at a gallery she was having an exhibit at, so this is also a signed copy with a cute little doodle. <laughs> I appreciate her art so much. Uh, every piece is so serene with the way that she uses watercolors and other mediums. Uh, the actual colors that she uses, you know, it's like every piece uh, is a perfect palette. Uh, and they just work so well together alongside with her other pieces. Uh, you know, reading about her inspirations, how she approaches each step in her drawing process, and seeing the beautiful environments uh, really take you into another world, as well as into her headspace, which I really appreciate. And that was actually a pretty cool uh, fold-out page. But yeah, I really love her art style. This next artist I met a couple times at that same gallery, and that's Ilya Kuchinov. Uh, the first time he hosted a workshop showcasing his drawing process and answered some questions. Uh, the second time I had gone to a screening of The Wonderland, which there are some pages in here, yeah. Some drawings in here uh, about that movie. Uh, and Ilya was the lead concept artist for the film. Uh, there was also a book signing at the time, but I had already gotten both uh, this eternal book uh, signed by him during the workshop, so he actually included a doodle, which is pretty cool, in that book. And then in this other book, Momentary, he had also included a personal doodle, which is always so nice <laughs> that they do that. Um, Ilya's art is probably one of the art styles that I look up to the most. I'm probably also biased because uh, I love <laughs> short-haired uh, girl characters, uh, but these are such great illustrations that range from fully rendered to his kind of pop art style. So here we have this more rendered works, um, so a little bit more rough. To, yeah, his more pop art style, some sketches, uh, and then I know he had included, yeah, some sketches from when he's on the train. Uh, so from close-ups to some full environments, they're always so amazing to see. Next is Sketch with Asia. It's such an informative book since she incorporated a lot of tutorials, and I really love her art style, and it just puts it all together in this one book. Uh, she includes some really useful tips that I often forget to do and practice. Uh, and like Heikala, there's a section where Asia shares the tools she uses and how she gets started with her warm-ups and concepts. It's pretty cool because she does both traditional and digital art and shows her process for both mediums. Uh, this book is truly a good reminder of everything that uh, I should be doing, <laughs> like thumbnails and fundamentals. So, I mean, just looking at this is just reminding me of, yeah, I need to get on it. <laughs> These next little booklets I got from Angela Wu at the Anime Expo a while ago in the Artist Alley. Their socials is one day four, and I'll link it down below. Uh, based on the year in the booklets, I think I remember when I was buying it that these were from a previous year and not the current year of the expo. So I got these, I think, 
2016. Uh, I've been going to Anime Expo long before that, I think maybe even 2005 or something like that, but basically a long time. <laughs> but anyways, these watercolor drawings are so cute, the quality of the paper is great, and I love these series of fashion illustrations that they've drawn out. It's a short and sweet little book and happy to have gotten these. Next is the Ushimitsu Doki Midnight Art Collection of Daisuke Richard. Uh, all the illustrations in here are pure aesthetics and the style centers around schoolgirls in these dynamic poses, perspectives, and all drawn out in these pop colors and light lines. The quality and delicate nature of the lines are really amazing and steady and you know, sometimes they may feel chaotic with the background but the color choices really bring it all together. Uh, I could could literally take all these illustrations and it would be the most aesthetic wall of art. <laughs> you can't see most of the girls' faces, um, but there's just so much detail that your attention goes to everything else, from the puppy jackets, the backpacks. <laughs> I, I just love going through this book and I highly recommend that you check out their work if you haven't seen it already circulating online. This next book is a great reference book and beautiful art book in general, and that's Everyday Scenes from a Parallel World. This has scenes and background illustrations from a whole host of anime and manga creators. Uh, while there are characters in majority of these drawings, the main focus are the environments. From the architecture to city life to the more rural, quiet scenes, it's so inspiring going through this book and seeing what artists can achieve with practice and dedication to their craft. It's also nice because the illustration titles are provided in both Japanese and English in case you can't read Japanese and uh, the creator profiles are at the end so you can find them online and see more of their work. But that's all of my art books so far. There are a couple others that I haven't received yet, but I'll share those when they come in. My collection is not huge by any means, but it's definitely curated with everything I genuinely love, admire, and reference for my own art journey. I'll link all of these down below if you'd like to get them for yourself. I'm not sponsored by anyone, but just wanted to share the art love. So hope you enjoyed hanging out with me while I showed you the other side of my book collection besides manga. Uh, as always, let me know in the comment section what you think of these books, suggestions on your favorite art books, or if you have any favorite artists. I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in my next video. Take care!